Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another Sims 4 speed build and another episode of Curb Appeal, the series on my channel where I attempt to recreate photographs in The Sims 4. So today's episode is a very special one because I am doing a limited pack build today. So if you guys are like OGs to my channel, you guys know that I started my channel as a base game only channel and then slowly started to add packs to my builds because when I first started my YouTube channel, I only had the base game. So I really started with nothing <laughs> and then slowly added packs here and there. So I've always kind of been a limited pack builder. So today's video or today's build is using only seasons, only nifty knitting and the tiny living stuff pack. So one expansion pack, seasons, and then two stuff packs. So only three packs, so pretty decent considering usually I like to use all packs. Um, so let me know down below if you guys like me doing limited pack builds, and if so, what one do you guys want me to do next? Like what kind of packs do you guys have so I know what to limit myself to? I usually like to do maybe like one expansion pack and a couple game packs or stuff packs but i'm not really sure what everybody has so definitely let me know down below so as per usual i'll pop the reference photo of what we are recreating up on the screen right here right now so i'm kind of scaling down the reference photo into a smaller build because i actually did build this on stream and my goal was to get the entire build done in one stream so usually my builds take like six hours and I have to have it over two streams, but the goal was to actually get the entire build done in one sitting. So that's what we did today. So in order to do that, I had to make it kind of smaller. And how I did that is I turned on the like tiny residence lot restriction to make sure I tried to keep it under a hundred tiles. So that's kind of a good way I found, even when you're not trying to make a tiny home necessarily, it's a good way to kind of like budget your tiling in advance just so you don't accidentally build a mansion. I find sometimes I will intend to make something really small and then I just get carried away and then make the rooms way too big and then all of a sudden I have like a 400 tile home and I wasn't even intending to do that. So sometimes it's a good idea to just turn on the tiny home residence lot train anyways just so you can keep track of your tiles and see if you can get it around 100 and you don't get like too carried away. So that's kind of what I did. I ended up turning off the tiny home residential lot trait anyways because we did go over, but I found it was a good way for me to kind of like budget and keep it in check, if you know what I mean. So as you can see, we are pretty much done the exterior and it looks very, very cute. Again, it's very small, which is good. Sometimes small homes are better because it makes you really pay attention to all of the details. And I find that I will furnish and like clutter up the home a lot more when it's smaller. Whereas if it's so large, sometimes you can't be bothered and you think like, oh, I can't, you know, clutter up every single nook and cranny. I'll go for a more minimalistic, clean approach. But when something's smaller, um, I find that I will like try a little bit harder with all the little details because it's less overwhelming. So I had a lot of fun with this one. And so far I'm just putting the little seasons, like little brackets underneath the kind of roof thing just to make it look a little bit more interesting. Just add those small little details. But overall, I'm really happy with the roofing I did here too. It's kind of like an odd shape because we didn't really know what the back of the home looked like. So I kind of just made it up and I think it looks quite natural and it looks quite cute and at all angles, it looks like quite a nice looking home. That's always a struggle is making the home look good and have curb appeal from all angles because sometimes it can look kind of like flat at the back but nice at the front if you know what I mean. So I feel like I did a relatively good job at making this home look interesting all around and that's also a benefit of tiny homes or smaller homes is they tend to look a bit cuter from all angles whereas like larger homes can have long flat bits and you don't really know how to make them look interesting and you end up putting too many windows and it looks kind of awkward so this one does look quite cute. So because I only had um, 
three packs to work with. Again, those were Seasons, Nifty Knitting, and the Tiny Home Stuff pack. I had to get a little bit more creative with my landscaping, and I did go into debug quite a bit and go into the Alive Edit Objects debug area. So that's a really, really great place to go to if you're looking for better landscaping items and just different items that you're you know, if you're a little bit bored of your current selection of items and you don't want to buy a new pack, the debug area has some really, really great stuff and I've slowly been discovering it and falling in love with it. I didn't use to use debug that often, but a lot of people in my stream have suggested it and I've been a little bit more adventurous lately, so I've been going into debug and finding some really, really nice stuff. So as the build goes on, if I see any debug items I want to point out to you, I will definitely do that. So this is also, if you guys didn't notice, because a lot of people ask me questions about this in my stream, this lot that I'm building on is actually in Oasis Springs. It's a base game lot, and for some reason, nobody builds in Oasis Springs. Well, it's not for some reason. I know the reason. It's because the lighting in Oasis Springs kind of sucks, because when you build in like that desert area, it just looks orange, like everything looks orange and kind of like yellow tinted and the colors don't really look nice, but there's some lots on the left side of the map in Oasis Springs. The one that I'm building on is called Granada Place and there's some like default homes. It's where like the Calientes live, I'm pretty sure, but over in this neighborhood, they have this nice like lush looking area with like grass and you can see behind the home, there's like a little pond or like a lake. So I think that this area is quite nice and this is one of the lots that I actually really love to build on in Oasis Springs and I feel like it doesn't get enough credit. Like I know Oasis Springs is kind of not everyone's favorite place to build but I feel like this neighborhood on the left side of the map is actually really really beautiful and people should take note of this area because a lot of people in the stream had didn't even recognize it which I thought was really funny because Oasis Springs has, you know, that reputation, but I think this one's really beautiful and I'm definitely going to build over here more often, especially if I do like a base game build in the future. But yeah, let me know what you guys think of this lot and if you guys knew that it existed or if you usually avoid Oasis Springs in general. But like I was saying about the debug items, that little like wheelbarrow full of uh, yellow plants, that's from debug. And this fence that I'm using right here, that's also from Debug. And I believe it's from the base game Debug too, believe it or not. So super, super nice. Um, I don't know if you can search for it. You just have to search Debug and kind of scroll through the catalog. But yeah, that fence with the leaves on it is from Debug. The wheelbarrow, also those hanging plants that I put by the porch, those are Debug as well. And also the little archway that I put in the backyard in between the two trees. It's kind of like a metal archway. That's from Debug as well. So a lot of cute items. Honestly, they should just put it in the normal catalog because why wouldn't we want to use it all the time? I think that it'd be so great if like the Debug menu got like a big overhaul and they just put the items into the normal catalog because I really don't see why they wouldn't be in the normal catalog because people use them all the time and they're just such nice items. So they might as well. And it would make a lot of people happy because a lot of players probably don't want to have to like type in cheat codes and stuff just to get access to these items when you can just put them in the catalog. So maybe that will happen one day. I'm not quite sure, but here you can see I'm doing the backyard and we just recently got a base game update with some free items here. So those are the items that I'm using. So this cute little like barbecue and then the cute table and chairs. Um, my chat suggested that I use them since they did come with the free update. So it's kind of nice that the Sims team is always giving us some like free things here and there. Um, the base game looks way different than it did back when I got it two and a half years ago or almost three years ago now. Has it been? Oh, it's been like three years since I started my YouTube channel. So yeah, three years. <laughs> Happy three year birthday to my YouTube channel. But yeah, the base game looks so different than it did three years ago. Like we have so many new items and so many new features like, you know, like movable stairs and like terrain tools and all that stuff. And like the window update and the doors where you can like place it on any, any grid. So, so cool. So it's nice to see that things are like improving, I guess. 
uh, but there's still obviously a long way to go. But here you can see I am pretty much just putting some pumpkins around the lot just to make it a little bit more autumn themed. I thought that it'd be better to make this kind of a October-y, autumn themed home instead of just a generic cottage. So hopefully if you see this video, you can start using this in time for Halloween or something like that. But yeah, if you don't want to use it for autumn, you can just delete the pumpkins, I guess, and just make it a normal little cottage. But as you can see, I'm just making it dark and putting around lights just to make sure that the build is well lit at nighttime. And I've said this already, I think, but my favorite lanterns for nighttime are those base game ones that I used just now. I think they're great and they actually give off a lot of light and they're super functional. So yeah, those are some of my favorites and they're like nice and sleek and white. And yeah, I think I think more lanterns should be like that one because it actually like works. A lot of the lanterns just like don't give off enough don't give off enough light, I find. So they're not super functional if you're actually trying to light up your yard in the dark. But anyways, you can see we are on to the interior now. So it's a super tiny interior and I'm not the best at tiny homes, I don't think. At least I don't really practice that much. I like to give my builds a lot of space, especially kitchens because I love having large kitchens with islands and every every kitchen has to be like my dream kitchen, if you know what I mean. So tiny kitchens are not quite my forte i guess so i struggled a little bit with this one just to make it functional completely but there's barely any counter space here the only place they have to prepare food is that little corner section in between the stove and the fridge so really not not the most luxurious kitchen i guess but it's still nice and new and modern and i did end up using the tiny living like bar seating so tiny living definitely came in handy in this home which makes sense because this is a relatively tiny home i guess but yeah you can see here i'm just putting down a little runner mat that one's from seasons so the other reason by the way that this was such a big deal is because i have been like i give I don't like seasons or supposedly I don't like seasons. I tell everybody that I hate seasons and I know that's super controversial. I didn't know it was controversial until my Twitch chat told me that it was controversial, but apparently everyone loves seasons and I didn't know that because I hated seasons <laughs> and the reason why, like I have, I had my reasons. I think I like seasons now. I, I'm not sure, but I think the reason is because we didn't get a new world and I really like new lots to build on because I'm a builder. And also, I wasn't happy with all of the color swatches that the Seasons items came with. It's like a lot of purple and blue and like lime green and orange. And I just thought the color swatches were so out there and not practical. And you guys know that I love my neutrals, my beiges, my black and white and that kind of thing. So the Seasons color swatches are just not it for me they're just not it <laughs> but slowly but surely people have been making me use seasons and making me realize that it's actually a really good pack so that's why um you guys really wanted me to do a seasons only build which is what sparked kind of this idea to do this kind of seasons cottage obviously i used a little bit um, more packs. I used Nifty Knitting and Tiny Living just because I thought why not get a little bit more variety but I think I can confidently say that Seasons is a good pack and I like it so my mind has been changed. Uh, I have gotten over the fact that the color swatches are a little bit too out there for me but I do really like some of the items and especially all the build assets like the windows and the doors. So so beautiful um, but yeah I finally, I finally gotten over my fear of seasons. So thank you guys. <laughs> thank you for changing my mind. But yeah, don't hate me for saying that I hated seasons because my mind has changed now. I've seen the good. But you can see I'm placing down some seasons couches here and I'm making like a little living room right by the door. It's a little bit squishy, but this place is very small. So I'm just putting down one of the season's rugs. I don't really, I don't use the season's rugs like ever, but I figured I should try and use one at least in this room since this was supposed to be a season's build. 
and I used this kind of like zebra print looking avocado shaped rug. Kind of an interesting shape, but you know, totally fine. And then uh, just put like a little TV and I don't know. It's a really small living room. It's it's kind of an odd shape, this home. Um, maybe not the most practical shape, but thank goodness, I must say, thank goodness that we got ladders in the base game update because instead of um, putting a staircase in this, which would have wasted so much room, I was able to put a ladder to go to the upstairs. So you'll see when we get to the upstairs, I make kind of like a loft style bedroom. And yeah. Thank goodness we had a ladder. Otherwise, I don't even know if I would have been able to put an actual living room in here if I had to put a staircase. But I really, really love that side table next to the couch there, the one with the drawers. It's from Nifty Knitting and it is so beautiful. I don't know why I don't use it more often. Sometimes it takes you limiting packs in order to really appreciate some of the items because often when you have all of the items in the catalog at your disposal you don't really notice because you always go towards the same items all the time but when you really narrow down your packs and limit yourself you tend to notice items and appreciate them more because you actually can see them in the catalog instead of being so distracted all the time so i think i'm actually going to do this more often and limit my packs more often just so i can actually like get to know the items a bit better and stop using the same stuff over and over again. So again, let me know down below if you have any suggestions as to what packs you want me to limit myself to next. And I'll be happy to do that for a future video. But so far the build is turning out pretty cute. I like that, again, it's looking a little bit more cluttered and a little bit more cozy because it's such a small floor plan. Usually if I do like a big floor plan, I often keep it very minimal, like I said. So. It's kind of cute that this one's a little bit more squishy and maybe good for like a single sim or maybe two sims who are just starting out and like maybe don't want to have a family and just want to live together or something like that or even a single sim who just wants to live alone and have friends over from time to time. I think that this is a really, really cute home. Um, but you'll see I get onto the upstairs in a bit and I do actually use color in the bedroom because you guys know the season swatches are very colorful so it kind of forced me to use color so you can let me know if you like it or not but also a little bit more about the sim that lives here is i end up giving them like a flex room off to the side that you'll see on the main floor and i make it like a painter and florist room so the sim that lives here really loves to paint and also really loves to like make flower arrangements and garden and stuff so you'll see that coming up uh, later in the video, but I just wanted to point that out so you have a better idea of the personality of this sim But here you can see upstairs. I am just doing the bathroom It's basically an all seasons bathroom. I really really like that seasons came with bathroom stuff Because the bathroom stuff is actually really nice and I actually use it all the time and I didn't realize that it was from the seasons pack so I actually love bathrooms I actually love the season's bathroom stuff and I didn't even know it. So now I know and it's great. Uh, I hope that the snowy escape pack comes with bathroom stuff as well, but I highly doubt it will. I know we're getting kitchen counters with the new snowy escape pack, so I'm really excited for that. But here you can see we are working on the bedroom and seasons came with two different beds so i ended up choosing this one without a prominent headboard i actually really like it because it's quite low to the ground and instead of using like end tables because the end tables were a little bit too high i often when i use this bed i like to use kitchen cabinets and kind of put them onto the ground to kind of make it look like a built-in kind of custom unit and i think it looks quite good it looks quite modern especially in like a small space Sometimes you don't want to put a bed that is so high up off the ground because it can make the room feel a little bit smaller. So when you're dealing with a smaller space, this is in The Sims or in real life, oftentimes you want to keep things a little bit lower to the ground. It'll make it look like the space is a little bit bigger instead of like a huge thing that's like five feet off the ground. I don't know. I don't know if that makes sense or not, but I know that makes sense like in my bedroom at home. My bed is like so high off the ground because it has like a huge bed frame and then I have like five inch like foam, memory foam thing on top of it. And then one day like we took the memory foam thing off 
and it lowered my bed so much and the room just felt so much bigger and yeah so what was what was the point of that story i don't really know oh i guess in this room the season's bed is quite low to the ground which i like so i ended up as you can see putting like these base game shelves up above it just to make it look again like kind of like a custom built-in headboard type of a thing i don't really know i just wanted to fill the space above there and i didn't want to put just like a generic painting i thought it'd be a little bit better to put like an actual bookshelf because then you can clutter it up a little bit add a little bit more personality to this room so i put a bunch of books put a little succulent plant just put some like nail polish and perfume and stuff like that because i figured the sim here might be a female but i'm not really sure but yeah here i'm just putting some stuff onto the side tables those two items that little lamp and that little like tray with the candles and that little book bookshelf thing with the all of the things on the side tables are from are from tiny living that's what i'm trying to say um, but you can see here that the color i chose is purple so i did end up going for a, a purple themed bedroom which i think is nice especially since the walls are white and the floorboards are brown i think the purple kind of adds a nice little like pop of color but it's still quite muted and quite warm feeling um yeah i mean I feel like I should try and use color a little bit more often. I don't know, sometimes it's scary and usually in real life I wouldn't want a bedroom that's so colorful but I feel like in The Sims we have such nice big bright colors that I should try and experiment a little bit more. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of going to be my goal I think going forward is to make my rooms a little bit more colorful. I think it's easier in a smaller build I must say, in like a huge large open concept mansion it's really difficult to incorporate color without it looking like tacky or making it clash but i think in these small builds like the one i did i can definitely incorporate more color easily and it can look quite cute so let me know what you guys think of this and let me know if you guys want me to start using more color or not or if you like my modern neutral builds i'd love to hear you guys' feedback but here you can see we are pretty much done the upstairs yes we are done i also ended up putting like a little tv and some poofs even though the poofs aren't functional they're just decorative but yeah if you want to sub out those poofs for something that's actually functional like an actual bench or something you are more than welcome to do that and here you can see i'm just putting like the outdoor laundry items uh, just because i thought it added to the vibe and also because i ended up putting a hamper upstairs so we needed some laundry so it would actually be functional so here you can see I'm doing the little flex room. Like I said, it's kind of like an activity room. If you don't want to have this room like as a florist or painter's room, you can totally change this room into whatever your sim is into. So if your sim is into like working out or they're in like the athletic career or whatever, you can change this to like a gym or a music studio or literally anything that you want. Um, it is a flex room, so feel free to change it. And Honestly, you can change anything in this build. If there's something you don't like, you can totally sub it out. That's the beauty of downloading the house and changing it. You can just do whatever you like if you don't like what I did. But here you can see I'm just like filling it up with flowers and tons of plants. And I just love how colorful and happy this room looks. And we thought to also put an easel kind of like facing the flowers so that it could, so that the sim could paint the flowers and kind of look out through the window and stuff and paint like all of their nice flower arrangements i was gonna have the easel facing the wall like i usually do but i figured like that's not super inspiring for the artists like they're gonna want to look at something that would inspire them so maybe their flowers would inspire them and they would want to paint those so yeah the room is quite tiny um since this is a tiny build but i think that it definitely serves its purpose and is large enough that you could change it into whatever you want and have it be very functional for your sim so overall this is a very tiny home we're almost done with the build i had a lot of fun doing this build and i don't know i'm really happy with the way that it turned out i'm really happy with the amount of detail i was able to put into it and i'm also happy that i was able to like do something a little bit different and use a pack that i previously thought i didn't like 
and I actually really love how this one turned out. So if there is a pack out there that you think you guys hate, um, let me know what it is and I'll try and build something with those packs to maybe see if you guys will like it after you see it kind of used in a different light. Um, except for the Star Wars one, because I've already done a build with that. If you guys didn't see it, you can check it out. But I'm pretty sure that's like the only build I can do with a Star Wars pack because it's not that useful anywhere else. And Strangerville. Yeah, that one, that was not the best either. But anyways, uh, the build is done. The screenshot should be rolling. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really, really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to give it a huge thumbs up. It helps me out so much. And if this is your first time meeting and you liked what you saw, don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you want to be friends or if you want to see more Sims 4 videos. I love you guys so, so much. And I'll see you guys all in my next video. Bye, everybody.